In this episode, we start wriggling the car. So we are going to put many of the components back into this thing, like a exhaust system, uh, drivetrain, drive shaft, and many of other suspension components to prepare the car for the engine to come in. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this short episode. I think it's going to be a really short one, but uh, nevertheless, please consider subscribing as the next episode should be engine in. Okay, the absolute first step I wanted to do was to take the car on the stands or in my case the bricks and then remove the hood, the bumper, the both wings or fenders so that I don't damage anything that's freshly painted in a process of, you know, repairing the car. So I removed everything as you can see and then that gave me enough room to start working on the engine and the other uh, suspension components. next thing on the line was the exhaust and it was really heavy to put it in uh, being a one-man show but I uh, couldn't resist and polished I wanted to polish the whole exhaust but I, yeah I ended up just polishing the tips which turned out to look amazing the rear suspension is also coming in with new Bilstein B4 shock absorbers Installing this catalytic converter or downpipe was so much easier when the engine is not in the way So it was a simple Trying to screw it back and then just leave it hanging until the engine is in Yeah, this was quite a um, pain because first time I installed the subframe I forgot to put the steering column in or steering rack, sorry. So yeah, I had to pull it out, then install the steering rack, then put the subframe with the steering rack back in. It was that much heavier and yeah, it took me about half a day just to do what you are seeing here. Just wanted to uh, stop for a second and show you this because I find this really interesting. You can probably tell this is a sway bar, this is a rear sway bar and this is the one that we took off of the car. This one over here, I don't know if, yeah, I've deleted the sticker, but this is also a Volkswagen Audi OEM part. Um, I don't know how obvious it is, but there is a clear difference in the thickness of the sway bars because this one costs 15 euros or pounds or dollars whatever somewhere around 15 to 20 euros and it's considered an upgrade since this is a couple of mil thicker than the OEM one that was on the car and also the walls of this tube are stronger basically uh, you can see the difference in here where this part is a bit thicker than this one. It's not much, it's a couple of millimeters, but this is an um, OEM upgrade you can do and it's really cheap and it's worth much more than spending 300 euros on a upgrade sway bar that's uh, just slightly thicker than this. So this is a quick tip, uh, first mod that we're going to do on this car. And yeah, a nice one, uh, you can feel, I don't know, it's a, a bit of a subjective thing, but you can feel the difference 
I can feel the difference when I'm driving the car. It's it's a bit sta more stable in the, in the corners, especially in the rear because we don't touch the front one. It's thick enough already. Of course, we are swapping these rusty um, screws for stainless steel ones since yeah I hate those screws anyway and stainless steel should not rust and then yeah I have new these ones as well sway bar links are also new I just installed them and this is and now it's time to put this thing in the car So now slowly things are starting to come together as we are moving to smaller and smaller bits and pieces, installing the ABS system, brake lines and everything that goes behind the engine basically. So when the engine comes in, there is no way you can do any of any of these parts. This was strangely enough an uh, important step. You need to install the sound insulation first, then ventilation module and to because there are two screws that you need to screw from the engine compartment so that, that that's why i'm doing the interior at this moment but it was only this part Not only was it super hard, as you could see in the time lapse, to extract this oil from the small bottle with the comically large syringe that I have and then put it into the bevel box. But the, this oil, this is the gear, gear oil for um, rear differ differential, not the Haldex, but the differential, as well as the bevel, of, uh, bevel box over here stinks to high hell and it i mean you can barely be next to it let alone trying try to squeeze it through a really small hole inside the bevel box all right so a quick overview what am i doing at the moment i am preparing everything that's on the rear side of the engine which basically means we only have a prop shaft to install which is in the car already uh, drive shafts on both sides which uh, we can install once the engine is in and there are a couple of heat shields over here carrier for the how do you call it catalytic converter and basically the oil thing was almost the last thing we need on the on the rear side of the engine which basically means in other hand that we are ready to slowly put the engine back in I mean almost ready since there are quite a lot of things here that also need to be done. Uh, you can see that the subframe is installed. One very important thing before we install the engine I need to put the control arms in because this screw over here you cannot get out in order to put the new control arm in if the engine is in. They made the bolt which um, cannot be fully um, unscrewed because there's not enough room so we need to do that first before the engine is in as well as I would like to uh, go ahead one more time and torque all of the screws for the subframe to torque spec also I'm terribly sorry for my haircut today I didn't use anything to make it look semi normal so yeah you have to bear with me with the hair like this I have to be honest here, I love working alone, but having a friend come over just to help me get some of the parts in, we had a lot of laugh, we had so much, uh, such a great time, so I'm really thankful that he stopped by, and I mean, it just goes to show that everything is better when done with the friends, even though we did not as much of the work as I would probably do by myself, maybe long, but sharing a passion with somebody and this that is exactly what i'm doing with you as well 
is the most important thing and if you have friends then stop by and help you and or, or even just just be there with you while you work on the car is such a great thing and i'm so thankful that he stopped by and yeah This is, I think, the last step before we attempt to marry or remarry these two back. So this is the last step before taking the engine in. And what I mean by that is attaching the engine mounts, both this is the one that goes on the engine side and this one is for the transmission. Um, if you haven't seen my videos where I talk about parts and redoing the parts, you can probably tell this is not, let me just take my hand out of, head out of the frame, this is not how a OEM part looks like because I have taken an angle grinder and grind off all of the, um, how do you call it, imperfections of the part, then resprayed it and did some detailing on that as well as on the other piece of course everything that was aluminium aluminum aluminium however it has been um, ground off so it looks nice and smooth and you can also see let me just try to this is how the engine mount now looks like yes so now we are going to try to mount those two i need to find the torque specs for both of those screws. I have also done everything on, I hope everything on the back side of the engine compartment. So firewall and stuff like that. Let me just show you. This is how it looks like now. So we have um, secured the ventilation module from the inside because it has two screws that go over here and over here. We added the climate control line over here and put the heat shielding back on. So this is now properly, I think, in. I've also done, you probably seen with a friend of mine, the control arms because if you forget them you cannot put the screw back in once the engine is in you have to lower the whole subframe to get the screw for the control arm out so yeah we done that in advance so i think we are now ready um, to put the engine to try to put the engine back in let's go Okay, this is really a huge moment in this whole series of rebuilding this car. I am going to try to slowly put the engine back into the car. So it's been one hell of a way to get uh, to where we are at the moment. So this, if this goes right, this is going to mark a significant step forward in this rebuild as, um, yeah, Rebuilding this whole thing was a crazy thing and to to be here in this moment looking back to how the car used to look like is really a mind-blowing moment. So I'm obviously really excited and um, I'm really happy to be able to share this thing with you. I am going to film the whole process and um, I'm just going to go for it. I have went through in my head through everything that I've taken off, if I've forgotten anything, uh, there is always this fear that I have to go back a couple of steps because there was something else that needs to go in first, but um, there is a point where you just have to believe that, yeah, now I've done everything right and this is now um, what I should do, so I am going to try by myself to slowly walk this whole contraption. So I'm going to uh, move one side, then the other side, then I'm going to move the table forward and then I'm going to like walk whole engine uh, until it's ready to pop in. Um, and yeah, 
Let's just do it. Let's see what see. Shall this thing turn out to be? You're going up, I think. Okay.
I pronounce you remarried. You may kiss the engine. I had to change because I was soaking wet, but yeah. The engine is finally in. Of course, as it always is, we are lacking a couple of bolts so we can say the engine is 100% in. But it sits. It's sitting in there. Uh, the hoist is still on just for my safety as I need to go under the engine and fit the bolt that I need to go ahead and buy. And then we can slowly remove this whole contraption and start working on either the interior or whatever. Uh, yeah, so yeah, um, that would be it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you will consider subscribing if you're interested how this build is going to end up. And I would really appreciate it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.